Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Sometimes when you are designing a publication for the web, you will want to include some interactive form components. Perhaps you might want to create a questionnaire with checkboxes for people to select their answers and then a field for comments at the end. With Publisher, you can do that. However, before you spend time creating a form for the web, you'll need to contact your web hosting server to verify that they have the necessary server technologies to support publisher forms. And this is necessary because the information your visitors fill into the form must go somewhere when they click the Submit button. This requires that your web hosting server have the necessary technology to interpret the information in your form, translate it into a document, often an email, that you can read and understand, and then send it to you. Now once you've confirmed that your web hosting server is capable of hosting your publisher form, you can get to work on designing it. Now you can find the form controls that you can insert into your form in the objects toolbar by clicking the form control button. This will open a pop-up menu where you can select one of the form control components to insert. Let's take a look at each of the six form control components. The text box can be used to insert a field for a very short entry such as a name. To insert this component, select it from the form control options in the objects toolbar. The component will be inserted into the middle of your document window for you to resize and reposition as needed. Now once it's in place, you can double click the text box to open the text box properties dialog box. You can also right click on it and just choose format form properties. Here you enter in default text for the field specify a number of maximum characters allowed. If you'd like to hide the information as it's entered, you can check hide sensitive text with asterisks. That will turn the display of the text in the form into asterisks. Also under data processing, it says return data with this label. This will be basically the name of the field. And so you can input a name, just make sure it doesn't have any spaces, and then click the OK button. Now the text area component is used to create a larger area for text entry, such as a field for comments or questions. To insert this component, select it from the form control options in the objects toolbar, and the component will be inserted into the middle of your document window for you to resize and rearrange as needed. Once it's in place, you can double click the component or right click on it and choose format form properties to open the text area properties dialog box. Here you can specify default text for the text box and give the field a label for you to recognize it by when the data is returned to you. Once you're done, just click OK. Now the check box can be used to give visitors to your site a place to mark their options or to opt in and out of certain programs. To insert this component, select it from the form control options in the objects toolbar and once again the component is inserted into the middle of your document window. The checkbox itself will not change in size, but the text box that comes along with it will. So you can resize that if needed. So it's really a grouped object, one label and one checkbox. Now once it's in place, you can double click the checkbox area or right click on the checkbox area and choose format form properties to open the checkbox properties dialog. Here you can specify whether or not the box is checked by default. You can give the field a label for you to recognize it by when the data is returned to you, and you can set a value for the checkbox data when selected. Then you can click OK. Notice that clicking into the text area of the component will not open the properties dialog box, but will allow you to add text such as a question or criteria for the visitors to respond to. So you can just type a label next to the checkbox. Now the option button can be used just like the checkbox. It has a slightly different look and it's more commonly used to allow visitors to select a single option from a group of options such as in a multiple choice quiz. Now the list box is another way to give visitors a list of options to choose from. This may be a good option when saving space is an issue as you can dictate the amount of space the list box populates no matter how many options are in the list. 
To insert this component, just select it from the Form Control options in the Objects toolbar and it will be inserted into the middle of your document window where you'll need to reposition it as needed. Once it's in place, you can double click the component or right click on it and then choose Format Form Properties in order to open the List Box Properties dialog box. Here you can give the component a label for you to recognize it by when the data is returned to you as well as add, modify, remove, or rearrange the items within the list that the user can select from. In addition, note that you can give the users the ability to select more than one option within the list by checking the user can select more than one item checkbox. Now the submit component in Publisher can be used either to send the information supplied by the visitor to you or reset the data entry within the form if the user makes mistakes. So to insert this component, just select it from the form control options in the object toolbar and the component will first launch the command button properties. This is because it needs to select the button type. Should it be a reset button or a submit button? And those are the two options. You can also choose to have an image by checking the image checkbox and then clicking the browse button to go find an image for your button or you can just check button text is the same as the button type. If you wanted to give it a different title, you could uncheck that and then type in your own button text. Although usually most web forms will have two buttons, one for submit and one for reset, so you might not want to confuse people. Then you just click OK. Once again, then it's inserted into the middle of, form, of the form where you can click and drag it to reset it in the form wherever you would like it to be. So usually you'll have both buttons in a form. Note that you can specify how you want the data in the form returned to you by clicking on the Form Properties button in the lower left corner of the Properties dialog box that's shown for any of your form components. So note as it does mention, you need to work closely with your internet service provider to use this option. So here you can choose whether you want to save the data to a file on your web server, send the data to you in email, or use a program from your internet service provider. So knowledge of the web server and how you're going to need to transfer data on your server is required to complete these actions outside of Publisher. So once you've specified the information, just click OK. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.